Black holes tearing apart enormous stars, pulsars spinning at incredible speeds and emitting powerful beams of energy, colorful nebulae with fireworks of newborn stars, galaxies of every possible color and size. All of these are found within our universe, but it's not infinite. It has a boundary, a literal wall. And beyond that, there's an absolute nothingness. Right now, we're going to make a journey to that wall. But first things first, our universe is like a humongous nesting doll. If you open it up, there's a smaller one inside. It's a galaxy. Inside that is an even smaller doll. That's our solar system. And the smallest doll of all is the Earth. Each of these dolls has boundaries that we are going to cross. For that, we'll need a spaceship and a big one. It also has to be able to move a hundred times faster than the speed of light. You get on board and start the engines. 62 miles above sea level is our first boundary. That's 10 times higher than passenger planes fly. This point is called the Kármán line. It separates the atmosphere of the Earth from outer space. Now we fly further to the edge of our solar system. We turn on the hyperdrives and fly past Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. We've traveled a distance of 100 astronomical units. 1 AU is the distance from Earth to the Sun. And here's the boundary of our solar system, the heliosphere. Here, the speed of the solar wind decreases rapidly. First, it drops from 620,000 miles per hour to the speed of sound. Then, there's a layer called the heliopause. This is where the wind almost vanishes. And then, our ship experiences a bow wave. This is where we feel the force of the interstellar wind, which collides with the boundary of our solar system. When you pass this boundary, you find yourself in the dark of interstellar space. And here, you can find two human-made objects that made this trip for the first time in history. They're Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. Voyager 1 crossed that boundary in 2004. Voyager 2 did it in 2007. These space probes discovered that the heliosphere is not a perfect ball around the sun. Its southern boundary is 10 AUs closer to the star than the northern one. So, we're moving in interstellar space and will soon approach a stone wall around our solar system. 200,000 AUs further, and there it is. This wall of rock is the Oort cloud. In fact, it's a pile of asteroids that surround our world. Scientists speculate that the Oort cloud could be the source of comets and meteorites that fall to Earth, but they're so sparse that we easily fly between them. Now we're in complete darkness. The Milky Way is about 106,000 light years wide. In a conventional rocket, it would take billions of years to fly across that distance. But you throttle to the max. You masterfully fly past the stars and planets as if on a racetrack. And within minutes, you're at the edge of our galaxy. There's no more interstellar wind. All you see are bright dots somewhere in the distance. These dots are huge galaxies. We need to look at a map to make a route to the edge of our entire universe. You're here, near the Milky Way galaxy. It's part of a cluster of galaxies called the Linnea Caea Supercluster. But even this huge thing is like a little street in a big city. Zooming out, we find Hydra Centaurus Supercluster. Thousands of galaxies on the map look like little dots. Maximum zoom out! This is our entire observable universe. We thought it was infinite, but we may have proof that it has a boundary. It's here, 10 billion light years away from our home. Even if you travel at the speed of light, a trip there would take twice as long as our whole planet has existed. During that time, the sun will either fade away or explode like a supernova, destroying our entire solar system. And if you can live that long and then return home, you will see that our galaxy is there no more. It's long since collided with the Andromeda galaxy and merged into one big cosmic body. Luckily, your ship is able to warp space-time so that this journey will literally take a few seconds. Boom! Congratulations! You've arrived at your destination, the Eridanus Supervoid. Some scientists believe this location is the evidence of collisions of our universe with something big enough to leave such a large scar. The Eridanus Supervoid is an empty and cold space one billion light-years wide. If you think of this void as a cup, it would fit at least 10,000 galaxies, and it appeared after an accident of gigantic proportions. The object that crashed into our universe was… another universe! 
Yes, other universes may actually exist. Imagine that our entire universe is a huge bubble that contains all the clusters of galaxies in the observable universe. There could be an infinite number of such bubbles. They could have been born during the Big Bang. These universes may be different from ours. They may have other galaxies and nebulae. But these bubbles could also be parallel universes. This means that if you chose cereal over oatmeal in the morning, in another universe, your twin would choose the oatmeal. Every choice you ever made in life had completely different consequences in a parallel universe. And because the number of choices are infinite, there's a whole infinity of parallel universes. So, like a regular bubble, our universe has a wall that is near the Eridanus supervoid. Long ago, another bubble flew past ours. As they approached each other, their gravitational fields began to interact. Our boundary wall began to deform and pull toward the other universe. The same thing happened on the other side. Then the walls of our universes came into contact. But as these bubbles moved, their connection began to break, and the other universe just ripped a huge chunk of ours. A cold void was formed at the point of collision, and that was the Eridanus supervoid. The problem is that the universe looks the same to the observer, regardless of point of view. For example, imagine a basketball hanging in the air. Now if we put an ant on the ball and tell it to find the edge of the ball, it will start running around it, making an infinite number of circles. But the landscape around the ant will not change. All it will see is a rounded horizon. That's because the ball remains the same from any point of view. The same thing happens to us when we try to find the edge of our universe. All because we imagine the world in three-dimensional space, and our view is limited. For example, you see an ordinary square in two-dimensional space. But if you add depth and change the point of view, voila! It's a cube. If we could see the universe in four-dimensional space, a square might be something completely different. But maybe we can leave our home bubble. The key to traveling to another universe might be inside a black hole. A black hole is one of the most mysterious objects in the universe. They're so heavy, they warp not only space, but time as well. It's like putting a heavy boulder on a net. The net will sag, and the closer you get to the boulder, the stronger the curvature is. Once you're in the gravitational field of a black hole, you can't leave it. We still don't know what might actually be in the heart of a black hole. Some scientists speculate that white holes also exist. Theoretically, they should be born along with black holes. Except for the color, they're the exact opposite of black holes. Nothing can come close to a white hole. At the moment, there's no data on such objects, but general relativity theory suggests they do exist. There's also a theory that a black hole may be a passage to another universe. When you get into a black hole, you can come out the other side through the event horizon of the white hole. So you bypass the boundary of the universes and find yourself in a completely different world. But we may have proof that a white hole exists. In 2006, scientists discovered an unusual burst of energy somewhere 1.6 billion light years away from Earth. This burst was unique. It didn't look like a supernova explosion or even the merger of two black holes. Some astronomers believe it was the birth of a white hole. But because it was unstable, it was destroyed almost immediately. This process was reminiscent of the birth of our entire universe, the Big Bang. So, scientists called it the Little Bang. This is our home planet Earth and its satellite, the Moon. Zooming out, and here's our solar system. A bit more, the Milky Way galaxy. And we're a small dot among an infinite number of stars. Now, even farther out, a cluster of galaxies. Dots and swirls in the endless space. Further, there's Laniakea, supercluster. That little dot here is our galaxy. Moving on, Hydra Centaurus supercluster. Huge clusters comprising thousands of galaxies are no more than a speck from here. Next, Pavo Indu supercluster. This is an area 200 million light years wide. We can zoom out until we see the entire observable universe. Each little dot in here actually contains thousands of galaxies and quadrillion stars. Scientists speculate that our universe may look like a bubble, and that bubble might collide with another universe. Yes, other universes could exist. Actually, even a whole infinite number of those. All of them could have appeared after the Big Bang. The collision between them isn't impossible either. At least, it might have happened before. 
And the proof is here, in the direction of the constellation Eurydinus. This place is called Eurydinus Supervoid. It's about 1 billion light years wide. By comparison, the width of our entire galaxy is only about 100,000 light years. There's absolutely nothing in this place, and it may be a trace from an old collision between our universe and another. Scientists think they were passing by each other. When the distance between them was minimal, the gravitational forces of the bubbles began to pull toward each other, just like two drops of water trying to connect when they're close. But the speed of the universes was too high for them to continue interacting. So the other universe just tore out a piece of our bubble. There might have been about 10,000 galaxies in that void, and all of them were either destroyed or taken over by the other universe. Let's travel to the edge of our universe to see how this collision might have taken place. We're 10 billion light years away from our home. Here, in another galaxy, we see amazing nebulae of different colors and shapes. And if you look in the other direction, there's a huge wall moving at us. All these bright sparks on it are enormous galaxies about to collide with us. But in fact, it's a humongous mirror that only reflects our universe. Here, space-time is distorted and begins to be pulled into another universe at a tremendous speed. The usual law of physics may simply stop working at this point. Gravity may disappear, and with it, all the stars would explode and people on the surface of planets would hang in weightlessness. But if the universes didn't go at a tangent but crashed directly into each other, things would be much scarier. The enormous amount of collision energy would probably cause an incredible explosion. Its force would simply destroy everything in our bubbles. Still, the two bubbles might begin to merge, too. At first, all galaxies at the edge of the universes would be torn apart. But then, the merger would begin. The galaxies would start moving chaotically. They would fly past each other, break apart, collide, and explode. The collision of two galaxies is an accident of enormous proportions. And it might happen to our home quite soon, in space terms. The Andromeda galaxy is heading our way. It's a spiral galaxy about twice the size of ours. And there are about a trillion stars there, which is twice more than in our Milky Way. At the very center of this bright galaxy lurks a dark beast, a black hole. Its weight is two and eight zeros of the sun's mass. Red giants hundreds of times larger than our sun. Pulsars emitting enormous amount of energy like spotlights. Rogue stars and many large and small black holes. This soup of dangerous objects is moving toward us at 68 miles per second. A trip to New York to Los Angeles at that speed would only take half a minute. The disk of Andromeda can already be seen with the unaided eye on moonless nights. As time goes on, it'll get even bigger. As Andromeda gets closer to us, its gravitational force will begin to stretch the arms of our spiral galaxy. It'll begin to unwind. The stars and planets will lose their orbits. One possible scenario is that an unknown asteroid, or even a dwarf planet from the Andromeda galaxy, will crash into the Earth at an incredible speed. Our planet will explode just like a balloon from this impact. Oh, goody. Another option involves stellar collisions. Our Sun would face another star. The bigger star will slowly begin to consume the smaller one. First, it will steal the light upper layers from it, and then it will eat it just like spaghetti or even like rigatoni. When a large star reaches its critical weight, it will burst. This explosion will destroy everything around it, including our solar system. Perhaps the shockwave will even reach other neighboring stars. Yet another scenario is that our solar system will be thrown into dark space. Imagine a tennis ball tied to a rope. You take the rope and spin the ball over your head like a sling. Then you let go of the rope and send the ball flying. This is what will happen to the Sun and all the planets around it. We'll find ourselves in dark and cold space. But life on Earth will not be affected. We'll still have our bright star to keep us warm. The only disadvantage is that all the stars in our night sky will disappear. And the most likely possibility is that the merger of two giant galaxies will have no effect on us at all. The thing is, the distance between stars and planets in space is enormous. So they can all just mix together and form one giant cloud. It would be like shoveling fine sand through a big sieve. The objects won't interact with each other. But the most interesting thing will happen to the black holes in the centers of our galaxies. 
Right now, there's a dense cluster of stardust and stars around them. As Andromeda and the Milky Way come closer together, they will begin to dance with each other. Gee, will it be the twist or the foxtrot? And when the black holes get close together, they'll begin to swallow all matter around one another. Billions of tons of colored stardust, asteroids, and star particles will fly toward the very center of either black hole. It might seem like this process happens very slowly, but it's an illusion. Super heavy objects like black holes warp the space-time grid, so time is much slower near black holes. And all objects that seemingly stay on the event horizon for weeks or even months are actually long gone. When the black holes finally come together, they merge into one super giant black hole. But its mass is slightly less than the combined mass of the two dark monsters. Some of their weight is transformed into collision energy. This energy is released so strongly that its waves can be felt in other galaxies. Now, a huge black hole gathers all this dense and hot core of the two galaxies around itself. At some point, the black hole feels full and throws out powerful jets of energy into space. This is called an active galactic nucleus. It's one of the brightest phenomenon in the universe and the most powerful source of electromagnetic radiation ever known. These jets may be more than 5,000 light-years long. By comparison, the distance from Earth to the nearest star, Proxima Centauri, is only 4.2 light-years. And the explosion that accompanies the jets has the power of 100 supernova explosions. Wow, blows my mind! The blast wave from this event could even reach the edges of a new galaxy, and this outburst would be visible from millions of light-years away. Now, there are dense clouds of multicolored dust at the center of merged galaxies. The weight of these clouds is so great that they begin to shrink and take on a round shape. Gradually, they become so heavy that they compress the core and nuclear reactions start inside them. The temperature begins to rise and soon, boom, there's a supernova. It's a veritable fireworks show at the center of the galaxies. Stars erupt from the fog and form new hot worlds. At this point, the arms of the two galaxies that were previously pulled out slowly return to their former shape. The super-heavy center of our galaxy has such a gravitational force that it affects stars and nebula hundreds of thousands of light-years away. The galaxy's arms twist again, and we see the new and finished galaxy, the Milkomeda, or Milkdromeda. Hey, how about the andro milky way? Blah, blah, blah. Well, that's hard to say. You're traveling through deep space, circling stars and entire galaxies. Whoa, looks like this multicolored nebula will soon collapse under its own weight and explode like a supernova. Now let's carefully circle this black hole. Try not to get caught in its gravitational field, or it'll swallow you like a space monster. Hmm, wait, what's that strange structure right there? It's a glowing wall! And if you look closely, each glowing dot is an entire galaxy. That wall has about 100,000 of these galaxies. The Milky Way has 100 billion stars. So this wall holds a quadrillion, that's 10 followed by 15 zeros, of stars like our sun. This giant structure is called the South Pole Wall. It's located about 500 million light years from Earth. By comparison, the closest star to our home is Proxima Centauri and it's about 4.2 light years away. Rockets can cover that distance in about 73,000 years. So the journey to the South Pole Wall may take longer than our solar system exists. And this wall is simply gigantic, even on a cosmic scale. It's about 1.37 billion light years long. To give you an idea of how large that is, the Milky Way is only 100,000 light years wide. But you can't see this wall even with the most powerful telescope. The problem is that the Milky Way itself obstructs your view. It's so bright that it's hiding this wall. It's like trying to look at the starry sky in a metropolis. The light pollution won't let you do that. Scientists have been able to detect this galactic wall by measuring redshift. We know that all objects in the universe are moving. They spread out from each other as a result of the Big Bang, which happened billions of years ago. And when galaxies move, their light waves change slightly. By measuring this change, we can understand what the object is and how it moves. And this wall isn't even the largest in our universe. This is the Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall. 
It's a giant flat superstructure about 10 billion light years wide. That's around 10% of the entire observable universe. And it's also a wall. That is, a cluster of galaxies. We were able to detect this giant structure by gamma ray bursts. It's the brightest electromagnetic event in the universe. You could even see it in the far reaches of our universe. Such bursts are a very rare event. In the Milky Way, for example, it happens once every few million years. If we notice many such bursts in a short time from the same place, it means that there are many objects like the Milky Way in that place. So, there are a lot of galaxies out there. Another unusual giant structure in the universe is the huge, large quasar group. It's about 4 billion light years across. So it takes a photon of light almost as long as our planet has existed just to get from one side of the structure to the other. And if you put the huge large quasar group on the scale, it would be 6.1 billion billion times heavier than our sun. Scientists have found that there are at least 73 quasars in that structure. These are some of the most unusual objects in the universe. They are the active cores of galaxies. At the center of a quasar is a supermassive black hole. This giant eats up the matter around it. A wild force of gravity twists the matter around the black hole, forming a disk. And this disk is the source of the strongest radiation out there. By comparison, the radiation from a single quasar is tens or hundreds of times stronger than that of all the stars in our galaxy put together. Because of such strong radiation, we can detect quasars even at very long distances. That's why they're also called beacons of the universe. Scientists use quasars to study the universe and the movement within it. One of the most distant quasars from us is about 13.1 billion light years away. This makes it one of the oldest objects in the universe. It appeared about 690 million years after the Big Bang, and it's almost three times older than our solar system. It's still glowing with extreme brightness, about 4 and 14 zeros times brighter than the sun. Scientists explain that at the center of the giant is a supermassive black hole, 800 million times heavier than the sun. All these giant structures are just building blocks of our universe. Look, this is our solar system. Now, zoom out a little, and this is where our home star is in the Milky Way galaxy. Zoom out again. Here's a local group of galaxies. All the bright spots here are galaxies. Here's Andromeda. And here's the Triangulum galaxy plus a few dozen other slightly smaller galaxies. They're all gravitationally connected. The size of this structure is about 10 million light years. That's 100 times the width of our galaxy. Zoom out, please. This one is the Virgo supercluster. It's 20 times larger than the local group. There are about 30,000 different galaxies. And the mass of the whole thing is about 1 in 15 zeros solar masses. Zoom out again, Laniakea. This structure is almost three times larger. It includes the Virgo supercluster and other smaller clusters. And there are about 100,000 galaxies here. Huh, it's not over yet. Zoom out one more time. Here's the Pisces Cetus supercluster complex. This giant galactic structure contains about 60 clusters of galaxies. So there are more galaxies in it than grains of sand in the desert. You know what to do. Zoom out. Phew. This is the observable universe. There are over 500 billion galaxies. And the stars? Well, there are about 1 billion trillion stars. The observable universe has its own structure. Clusters of galaxies form chains and walls, as you've seen before. But these strands are separated by huge regions of absolute emptiness. These areas are called voids. In these places, there is no matter at all. There are fewer molecules in the voids than in an empty room. One of these voids has a very mystical reputation. It's the Eridnus Supervoid, or the Cold Spot. It appeared here only 380,000 years after the Big Bang. It's almost 1 billion light years wide and could hold hundreds or thousands of galaxies with trillions of stars. Some scientists believe that this cold spot may have been the result of the largest collision ever. A collision of universes. There's a theory that our universe is some kind of bubble, a huge sphere that contains all these walls and chains of galaxies. Now imagine that there's an infinite number of these bubbles. They could be parallel worlds or different universes. Many years ago, one bubble came close to the bubble of our universe. Their walls touched 
and the two universes connected for a while. It's like two drops of water coming together. But that universe kept moving. The area where the bubbles joined became thinner and thinner until that connection broke and the two bubbles detached from each other. At this point, the second universe ripped some of the material out of our bubble. All those galaxies that used to fill the Eridanus supervoid ended up in a parallel universe. Scientists supposed we might travel through other bubbles. Flying to the supposed wall of our universe would take forever. And then it would take even longer to fly through interuniversal space. So we have to use portals or wormholes. Here's how it works. Imagine a piece of paper with point A on one side and point B on the other. Instead of moving all the way across the sheet of paper, we just fold the sheet so that point A is right above point B. All that's left to do is make a small hole and the journey takes only moments. Some scientists believe that such shortcuts through universes lie inside black holes. But how do you survive falling into a black hole? You just have to pick one that's big enough. It's all about gravity. Imagine you're falling into a black hole right now. The closer you get to it, the stronger effect it has on you. It intensifies with every inch. At one point, the gravitational force that affects your head is much stronger than the one that affects your feet. Then you turn into spaghetti. Yum. But if you choose a supermassive black hole, like the ones at the centers of galaxies, the gravitational force in them increases gradually. They can be millions of times heavier than the sun and much bigger. But the gravitational force on your head and your feet will be almost equal, and you will still feel comfortable. Who knows? Maybe if you manage to survive a fall into such a massive black hole, you'd find yourself in a completely different universe where different laws of physics apply. But so far, this is just a theory.